Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage 11 of the Tour de France 2022. Now this is going to be a mammoth stage because we have the Col de Telegraph, Galibier, and then of course the last climb on today's 150 kilometer stage, 11 kilometers long, 9% average. The Ganon is a monster of a climb. They've only climbed it once before in 1986 when Greg Le LeMond dislodged Bernard Hinault and went on to win the Tour de France. Now let's get into the action of today's stage because it is crazy. From kilometer zero, it's Wout Van Aert and Matthew Van Der Poel going up the road. These two are putting on a show, holding off the whole peloton back there as attack after attack is trying to bridge across. Now it'll be a 20-man group that goes up the road, and Christophe Laporte and Wout Van Aert from Jumbo Visma are both represented in this 20-man group. No one else up here is a threat on general classification, so UAE Team Emirates with their six-man-only team is going to try to control the peloton back there, calm everything down, relax the stage, and start letting that 20-man rider go up the road. Now those riders, they start working well together because Wout Van Aert and Christophe Laporte, they're on the front and drilling it, trying to get maximum time here on today's stage. Before this group solidly got away, Jumbo Visma weren't even really happy with this group, and they were still trying to send Tis Benut and Nathan Van Hooydunk up the road. This was crazy, but you can tell the M.O. for here from Jumbo Visma. They want to get as many guys as they can up in this front group. That doesn't happen, and like I said, we, we continue the stage with the 20-rider group. They'll hit the first climb on today's stage, about three kilometers long and super steep. You look at the picture when you see it, hairpin after hairpin after hairpin. You know it's a crazy steep climb, and this is when we see Matthew Vanderpool's Tour de France 2021 season come to an end. Gotta believe the Giro d'Italia took too much of a toll here on Matthew Vanderpool trying to finish his first Grand Tour at Giro d'Italia, which he did and won a stage, and then immediately one month later comes here to the Tour de France and blows here on stage 11. That'll be it for Matthew Vanderpool. He's out the back. Up front, we see Wout Van Aert. He's pulling hard. Christophe Laporte's pulling hard on this climb, trying to get maximum time on UA Team Emirates because they got two monster climbs coming up. The Col de Telegraph and Galibier, they count them as two climbs, but in my book, this is one monster climb at about 35, 36 kilometers long in total length. When they hit the climb, the break up front of less than 20 riders now starts blowing up all over the place as Wout Van Aert set in tempo up the cold to telegraph. Christophe Laporte comes off for Yumbo Visma. Gotta believe this is the Yumbo Visma's plan right here as Christophe Laporte's coming out the back of this group. But Wout Van Aert is staying in the front. Now the peloton behind, they'll start this climb. The gap is up at around nine, seven minutes right now, but it's really kind of irrelevant to the story here on stage 11 with the exception of Wout Van Aert securely up the road in the first group and Christophe Laporte dropping on the Col de Telegraph. Now as we start coming to the summit of Col de Telegraph, after UAE Team Emirates lost Mark Hershey when the climb started, Mikhail Berg, he did a solid job of tempo on the front of the peloton and then he pulled off and it was Solaire time. So Lair's on the front of the peloton as they're nearing the top of the Col de Telegraph. And then there's attack by Tish Benut. He throws in attack on the front. And then guess what? Just before the top of the KOM, you know it. This is the plan here from Jumbo Visma. Primoz Roglic throws in a massive attack and goes over the Columbia. Now on his wheel back there is race leader Tade Pogacar. Jonas Vinigo is locked on. And Mark Soler looked like he was going over near the front of the group. But when we're going down the descent, guess who's waiting? Christophe Laporte from Jumbo Visma. This was the next plan in action for Jumbo Visma as Christophe Laporte went easy up the telegraph. Now all of a sudden he's got his race leader Jonas Vinigo and Primoz Roglic locked onto his wheel. Tade Pogacar is locked there, and then it's just four riders up front. What happened behind when they went over the climb? If you look at the picture, it's Mark Soler with Garrett Thomas. Then we look at the picture with the gap a little bit further back. Two UAE riders on the front, I believe. Got to believe it's Brandon McNulty and Rafael Micah. What's happening up front? Christophe Laporte's driving it 100% right behind. When we look at that two-man rider with Garrett Thomas 
and Mark Soler. Soler doesn't want to pull. He sits up. Garrett Thomas, the Enos rider, jumps Mark Soler. He's going to bridge the gap up to the four leaders up front. He will get up there, and then it's Christophe Laporte still driving down this descent, and Garrett Thomas getting a little bit of a rest for the moment as he's on to the back of the Yumbo Visma train up there with three riders pulling it. Tade Pogacar is locked onto the wheel. We back up, and we see the peloton. They're going to sit up because the UAE Team Emirates don't want to pull everyone back on. This is a bit of a mistake, but they're going to do it anyways. Now when the road starts to go up, we're not properly quite on the climb here of Galibier, but it is starting to go up. Now all of a sudden, there we go. Primos Roglic throws in the first tack when the road starts to go up, and then Jonas Vinigo will throw an attack when Tade Pogacar is looking the other direction. He attacks hard to the left. Tade Pogacar covers the move. Primos Roglic throws in another tack, and then Tade Pogacar is going to throw in his own attack. Tade Pogacar, what are you doing at this moment? Just sit on the wheel and rest. Guess what? You got for GC Chasers coming behind, and you got teammates back there. They're only 30 seconds back, but Tade Pogacar is putting on a show. Then all of a sudden, Tade Pogacar starts riding some tempo. He'll sit up, and then we'll see some more attacks. Followed by Primos Roglic and Jonas Vidingo going 1-2 on the Slovenian Tade Pogacar. And then we see some groups coming from behind. We're a little bit early here up on the climb of the Col de Galibier. And it's Marc Soler back there in the group. Marc Soler is not happy right here. And he can see the favorites just in front. And that's his race leader, Tade Pogacar. So Marc Soler, the Solerism, will jump across up to Tade Pogacar. And then when he gets up there, just as he latches onto the back, Primos Rogo just saying, no way, I'm not going to have Soler here. We got... Tade Pogacar isolated. We want to keep it that way. Primos Roglic throws a bit of an acceleration, and we see Soler come right off just as he attached up to his race leader, Tade Pogacar. Now from behind, all of a sudden, Soler finds some second win. He gets back up there again, and then instead of sitting on, Soler is going to go straight to the front and start pulling. This is the Solerism effect here on stage 11 as Mark Soler is pulling hard. Now all of a sudden, everybody starts coming back on, and it's UAE Team Emirates, Brandon McNulty and Rafael Micah that are struggling. Next to come, of course, you can see it happening. It's Jumbo Visma. They're going to throw in some more attacks. And then Tade Pogacar is going to get on the front and start drilling it and send all of his teammates out the back. This is about with four kilometers to go. Tade Pogacar is putting on a show. He's ridden everybody off his wheel, and it's only Jonas Vinigo that can stay with him. When they go over the summit of the Glibier, Tade Pogacar is on the front, and he's pulling hard. Jonas Vinigo is locked on his wheel. Roman Bardet, DSM, has done a fantastic fantastic job. He was originally back there in that group chase and found his way back up. Even throw in an attack here near the top of the Glibier, but Tade Pogacar wasn't having any of it. He wanted the KOM here on the Glibier, I guess, because there ain't much other reason why he would have been pulling this hard on the front if it wasn't going for the KOM Strava record here on the Glibier. They'll go over the top, and we'll see some attacks by Bardet on the descent. Garrett Thomas came back. He throws an attack on the descent. And then the group from behind comes all the way back up to Tade Pogacar, but there's no UAE Team Emirates guys there. Going over the top of the Glibier, let me point it out. It was Rafael Micah back there with Primos Roglic that had gotten dropped. Now up front, Wout Van Aert has dropped back all the way back to this favorites in the group here. That's about 12, 15 riders strong. And let me point out, at this point in time, Jumbo Visma, Primos Roglic is off the back in the group with three FDJ riders pulling on the front trying to bring back this lead group of GC favorites here on stage seven before the Ganon starts proper. Now FDJ was pulling hard, but guess what? It took Wout Van Aert coming back to the favorites, dropping all the way back to the Primos Roglic group and pulling along with FDJ to bring that front group back up to Tade Pogacar and all the favorites. Wout Van Aert starts pulling like a monster on the front. The time gap up to Warren Bergui, who attacked going up to Glibier. He still got about three and a half, four minute lead when the Ganon starts proper. Up front, though, we know Warren Bergui's days are numbered because he's losing time left and right and looks ugly on the pedals at this point in time. Behind as the climb starts for the GC favorites, Wout Van Aert pulls off. Primos Roglic goes to the front, but it ain't for very long. Probably way 200 meters, maybe three. Then Rafael Micah, who had survived the Col de Telegraph, the Galibier scare, and then got back on with the help of Wout Van Aert that pulled Primoz Roglic back up to this GC favorite. 
and it back there was Raphael Micah from UAE Team Emirates. So now we get into the climb after Primoz Roglic and Wout Van Aert has fell off the front. Raphael Micah setting a steady tempo up here. We look at the back of the GC favorites, about just under 20 guys, and they start blowing up hard with the pace from Raphael Micah. He's got his teammate Tade Pogacar locked on, and Jumbo Visma still have some numbers here, but it's not going to take too much longer before Raphael Micah brings this group down to about eight guys. And and guess what? It's two UAE Emirates and one Yambo Visma, Jonas Vinigo. That's it. They've had five and six numbers up here against Tade Pogaccio throughout this stage. But now, all of a sudden, UAE team Emirates have flipped the numbers. When we got into the climb with Rafael Micah pulling, Niall Quintana threw in attack. At that moment in time, I thought this was a little bit early in the climb. But Niall Quintana's on a mission, chasing down his teammate up the road from Arkea Samsic, Warren Bargui, who's, like I said, legs are starting to fall off. Great decision here from Nairo Quintana. Next rider to attack is going to be Roman Bardet from DSM. Rafa Micah doesn't change the pace at all. Tade Pogaccio is locked on his wheel. Roman Bardet is going up the road. And then with four and a half kilometers to go, we see Yambo Visma's Jonas Vinigo throw in a massive attack. No one can follow it. Rafa Micah tried, gapped his teammate Tade Pogaccio as Tade Pogaccio is back there swinging. Rafa Micah is done and he'll pull off hard right and leave Tade Pogaccio to chase the leaders up front. Remember, Jonas Vinigo was only 39 seconds down on the general classification. Tade Pogaccio put on a big, big show going up the Glibier of, of strength, but now all of a sudden he can't follow Jonas, Vin Jonas Vinigo's wheel. As we get further, Jonas Vinigo's flying on the pedals. He catches Bardet quickly with his first attack from Tade Pogacar, and then he passes and drops Roman Bardet. Next in the crosshairs for Jonas Vinigo is Nairo Quintana. Nairo Quintana, who caught and passed his teammate Warren Bargui, went by him and now was solo up the road trying to win here on stage three. And let me remind you guys, he's a threat on the general classification. Jonas Vinigo doesn't take too long to catch Nairo Quintana, and then he passes the Colombian and starts solo here on the stage. He gained 30 seconds in about one kilometer, one minute and about a kilometer and a half, 2K. Now he's at a minute and 30 seconds and we look at the gap back there with about two, three kilometers to go. It's Jonas Vinigo solo, Naro Quintana following, Roman Bardet in third and behind it's the yellow jersey of Tade Pogacar and he's got some company. He's got Garrett Thomas locked on his wheel a little bit further up the road. Davi Dago do the FDJ rider. He's been off the back Back chasing this whole stage over all these climbs, but he had two teammates with him. And those two teammates, Michael Storr, Valentin Madois, had done a fantastic job of looking after Davide Godu, who's still up here on the race leader's yellow jersey. Then Davide Godu throws in attack on the yellow jersey, and now he's starting to gap Tade Pagacha, and Adam Yates is gapping Tade Pagacha too. Garrett Thomas is in front of those two, and everybody at this moment in time is all singles going up to get on. When was the last time have we seen a stage like this at the Tour de France? It is absolutely marvelous as each rider is trying to salvage today's stage. The GC here at the Tour de France and Jonas Vinigo is going solo. He'll cross the line and win today's stage, one of the most fantastic stages I have seen. It doesn't get any better than this, folks. It was absolutely fantastic, marvelous, a gigantuous stage here at the stage, eight, stage 11 of the Tour de France. Jonas Vinigo with his time. We start looking because the clock keeps counting. Nairo Quintana will cross the line at one minute, and then we're going to have to wait a few seconds longer for Roman Bardet, the DSM rider, who was putting on a spectacular show to Giro d'Italia, and now he's doing it again here. And the, at stage 11 of the Tour de France, Bardet comes through at 110. And then just behind him is going to be Garrett Thomas at 140. And Davi de Godu crosses the line at 205. Sixth on the stage, Adam Yates from Inyo. So put two in the top 10 on today's stage 11. And then we're still going to have to wait till 2 minutes and 51 seconds for Tade Pagacha, UAE Team Emirates rider, race leader here at the Tour de France to cross the line. We look at the general classification. Jonas Vinigos in first wearing the race leader's jersey. Bardet's just back at 2 minutes and 15, 16 seconds. And then Tade Pagacha, 2 minutes and 22 seconds back on the general classification. Garen Thomas will hold fourth here on the finish of today's stage, having Roman Bardet jump over him for the general classification. Now, let's break down today's stage proper because it was just a fantastic stage and let's really 
let me really highlight what I believe happened on today's stage. Now, no doubt, Yumbo Visma had the plan here to send multiple riders up the front. They did a fantastic job. Then you needed some big, big mistakes from UAE Team Emirates. And why did they happen? Simple. They haven't been in this situation before. Tade Pogacar is only 23 years of age, made mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake, and some more mistakes in today's stage in order to allow these Jumbo Visma tactics and Jonas Vinigo being able to solo up this last and final climb that got on on stage 11 against Tade Pogacar to win. Now, when I look at it proper, what happens? Going over the toll, the telegraph from Christophe Laporte setting up. What really causes the problem? Solarism, of course. Soler probably couldn't quite follow the wheel, and then he was playing a little bit of games with Garrett Thomas and didn't want to pull. That made it so that Tade Pogacar at the front was isolated against three Jumbo Visma riders, Primoz Roglic and Jonas Vinigo being the threat on general classification. When Garrett Thomas jumped that gap, that all of a sudden left Soler out there by himself. The other problem is when we look back, it was two riders from UAE Team Emirates refusing the chase, and I think that's Brandon McNulty and Rafael Micah could be the only, has to be the only two riders left for UAE Team Emirates. When they're playing the gap tactics back there, that gap opens up to 30 seconds to Tade Pogaccia. When we reach the bottom of that climb, it's probably about four or five kilometers where it descends for two or three, and then it climbs up a little bit, and then it's really fast after that bump where the tax from Jonas Vinigo and Primoz Roglic, they're doing 40, 50 kilometers an hour with these attacks against Tade Pogacar. If Tade Pogacar was wise and more experienced, if his director in the car had prepared him for this scenario proper, Tade Pogacar would know at this moment he's got three teammates back there. Three good teammates back there that are 30 seconds. He's just got to kill this move. If he kills this move, everything's okay. He doesn't kill and he puts on a show and he tries to drop everyone. But how are you going to go solo 55 kilometers out? Now, Yumbo Visma, I have one problem with their tactics on today's stage. It needed these kind of mistakes to work, but I loved all the tactics. Don't forget that. Up until this moment when Tade Pogacar throws in his first attack against Jonas Vinigo and Primoz Roglic, I love their tactics 100%. It was fantastic. It was exactly what I expected on today's stage. Here was the problem, though. At 55 kilometers thereabouts, when Tade Pogacar puts in his big attack on the front, if you're Jonas Vinigo, Primoz Roglic, just set up. Let the 23-year-old young kid, let him strut his stuff going up the road. You guys remember stage six of this year's Tour de France? Wow, Van Aert, the young stud, he's going up the road wearing yellow, thinks he's going to put on a show, keep the yellow race leader's jersey. No one can go the distance. If Tade Pogacar can go the distance from 58 kilometers out, in my opinion, if he can go the distance, Jumbo Visma, you weren't going to win anyways. I'll point out some absolute facts here at this point in time. If they set up, let Tadej Pogacar go. There's four, five Jumbo Visma guys there. Primoz Roglic, Jonas Vinigo, Sepp Kuss, Tis Benut still there, Steven Kreiswick still there, and oh, I forgot one, Wout Van Aert, he's up the road. So, unless Tadej Pogacar has magical form, there's no way he's going over the Galibier with 40 kilometers down the descent, you're gonna have to pull 10, 15 kilometers down, you got to pull another 10 or 15 on the flats, and then you're gonna have to go into what is the hardest climb in the Tour de France up to this point, and probably throughout the Tour de France, and you're gonna have to solo the last 11 kilometers all the way to the finish and help, no, help nobody in that original group that was still shat, scattered and devastated can do any help for Tadej Pogacar. Leave Wout Van, Wout Van Aert to just pull him back, coming down the descent. Jumbo Visma, I think, could have sealed up the Tour de France, in my professional opinion right here. I think that Jumbo Visma could have sealed up the Tour de France, let Tadej Pogacar hang out there like Wout Van Aert did on stage six, let Tadej Pogacar do a solo ride like we saw last year on stage 21, or sorry, in 2021 on stage nine, when Tadej Pogacar soloed over the penultimate climb, went up the Col de Colombier, catching everybody, and then dropped down the backside and lost the stage when Dylan Toons caught him in the wet and miserable conditions, and Tadej Pogacar didn't want to take a risk. So we know 
On today's stage 11, if Tadej Pogacar is going to throw an attack from the penultimate climb out because of last year's stage 9 at the Tour de France, I can assume relatively with some pretty good strength here that he would try to solo all the way on today's stage. Jumbo Visma could have sealed this race up and they could have had Primoz Roglic on the general classification at the end of the stage. Now, would I really have wanted to change anything that happened on today's stage? Absolutely not. It was fantastic. Jumbo Visma, you guys put on a show. Tade Pogacar, you salvaged today's race still, only being two minutes and 22 seconds down. And right here, sitting on the podium of the butterfly effect, Tade Pogacar, if I was forced to saying, you got to bet your money, you got to bet the house on Tade Pogacar or Jonas Vinega winning the Tour de France, my money's still going on Tade Pogacar. Because guys, this was not a bad day for the 23-year-old Slovenian. This was probably just a calorie issue. When you're in that front group of GC favorites and you have no teammates, you can't go back to the car because they're going to attack you left and right if you do coming down this descent off the Glibier, and he has no teammates. If you look at the pictures, all the other riders, Enos, Yumbo, Yumbo Visma, Arkea, they're all going back to the cars. I didn't see Tadej Pogacar go back to the car. He could have, It's maybe I missed it, but if I did, I bet he would have been attacked and I didn't see that happen. I did see when Wout Van Aert came back on just as he was catching the back of the group, we're gonna see the arm of Rafael Micah go up. That means he's going back to the car when he comes up to Tade Pogacar. I'll show you the picture with 16 kilometers to go. Only five kilometers before the last, last KOM starts here, the Ganon, the 11 kilometer vicious climb to the finish. That's when I see Tade Pagacha with his teammate Rafael Micah hand him a bottle. And I got to believe at this point in time, with Tade Pagacha blowing on this last climb, I bet it was just calories. There's just no way he can go back to the car and get calories while everybody else, Yumbo Visma, with their five, six teammates in there, have the opportunity to go back to the car. Tade Pagacha just can't do it. So if I'm betting my house, if you're saying, Chris, you got to pick one or the other, I know Jonas Vinigo has not been dropped by Tade Pagacha at this year's Tour de France. But if I'm betting my house, two minutes, 22 seconds, I'm still putting it on Tade Pogacar as a bit of a nudge over Jonas Vinigo, even though it's two minutes and 22 seconds. So you guys better like and subscribe. I'll bring you more tactics from the Butterfly Effect and see you on stage 12 of the Tour de France.